Hi, I'm Kurt, and I'm with Travers Tool Company. If you've been in a machine shop or around a milling machine for any more than even five minutes, you've had to find the edge of a workpiece, maybe the center of it, possibly the center of a round rod, and you've needed to use an edge finder. Maybe not knowing what that was, or maybe you do and just aren't sure how to use it. There's a lot of different types, and so in this video, I'm going to go through each type explain what the differences are and how they're used. Basically what we have here is some that are visual, some that are audio, some are electronic, and a light uh, illuminates inside of it to show you when you got your edge. Um, a couple of these things here are not actually edge finders. For example, this is a center finder. Um, not a fan. I'll explain why in a second. This is uh, kind of called an edge finder, but you need an edge finder to use with this. The um, kind of the slang term, the nickname it has is a chair. Why? Because it kind of looks like a chair, but it's super handy. And uh, I'll show you how to use one. To start with, you'll notice different body sizes. So the one on the left is half inch. The one on the right is three eighths. So they go into the same size collet, obviously. Um, I like the half inch better. And a couple of reasons why. I, I seems like I have a half inch collet in my milling machine more often than I have a three eighths. But besides being lazy about that, um, the other reason for it is because of the offset. So if you notice this three eighths, it pushes off to the side a little bit enough to be noticed, but the, the, the half inch, since it's a bigger body, has more of an off, offset to it. So you can see on both sides, there's a noticeable difference there between those two offsets. So that's an advantage for two reasons. When you're sneaking up on the workpiece, you can have it more off center. And so you'll start to detect that you're getting close at a farther away position than you will with a three eighths. And another reason, once it does reach uh, the edge of the, of the work part uh, the work piece, it'll, it'll move eccentric more than uh, the three eighths will. And it'll just be more noticeable that, um, that you did reach the side. So here's a description of both, or I'm sorry, not a description. Here's an example of both the half inch and the three eighths in a side-by-side -side comparison. Do you remember that chair that I mentioned earlier? Well, this is what they kind of refer to as a chair. It's just a nickname, but you can see the resemblance. It kind of looks like a chair, kind of silly, but um, what this is for is to help you to find the edge um, of a workpiece, and it's just another way to do it. So it's magnetized. That's a magnet on the inside of that. So I'm just gonna find the edge of my vice jaw. I'm dropping the edge finder down into this little edge finder helper here. And I'm gonna do the same thing as before. A little more wobble. Just gonna touch the back first. There we are. And zero. Check it again. There we go. Okay, so that's on one side. And I'm going to move it right across. Oops, a little bit too fast. There's the other side. And notice the indicator is right exactly on zero.
So I'm double checking myself. And there it is. Yep, that's zero. So now, now I'm going to move half the distance back. Which is going to be 250. And there it is. So that's the center of this thing, kind of known as the chair, or exactly on the edge of my vice jaw. And that's what that's used for. So here's a little bit of a different situation. I, if I want to put a keyway, if I want to machine a keyway into the center of this shaft up on top of it, then I need to find that the center of the shaft or the rod. But how am I going to do it? So if I bring the edge finder down and if I move it in there, it's it's only since the outermost edge of the of the rod is in the vise, it's not going to be touching on the on the uh, on the closest side. It's only going to be touching up higher than center going horizontally on this shaft. So I can't do that. I can't use that edge finder. That's what the pointed edge finder is for, is to get it right up against the, the, um, the radius. So let's see how that works. So since this edge finder point is cone shaped, it can go up against the side of the, um, the rod, the, the shaft, higher than the center which is covered by the jaw, so I can't get on the on the center of, of this shaft. So what I'm going to do is same thing, same thing I did before. Sneaking in on it, getting closer, closer, closer. And we're done. Setting the zero on my DRO, if you want to call it that. Okay, I'm going to double check myself now, moving the edge finder away. Okay, that's exactly on zero. Now here's the key when you're using a pointed edge finder on the, the a radius of a rod is you cannot lift the spindle up. So once that edge finder comes up, if you move it over and you move it down on the other side, who knows if it's gonna be at the same exact height as it was before. So what I'm gonna do is move the material away and come the long way around. If you can't do this because you're doing this in the center of a long rod or something like that, then um, another solution is to use a stop or do something so that you're absolutely sure that the height of the edge finder is exactly the same on this side as it is on that side. And then we're gonna start the machine up again. Get a nice wobble. And there we go. So then I'm then you would double check yourself again and do the math and just move it to center. And that's the center using a cone-shaped edge finder. So here's another type. You see the shiny edge on the on this uh, center finder? That's just a little uh, cut in there, just a little flat grind. And what that's for is it just chatters a little bit. So not only do you see it come off to the side like the other ones that we were we were using, but you can also hear it a little bit. Well, supposedly, maybe on a quieter machine. Let's see what happens on this particular machine. So as you can hear, my machine makes a, a, quite a lot of noise, and I'm getting there, getting there, getting there.
there we are. So right now, of course, if you turn the machine off to quiet it down, it'll stop spinning and you won't hear it anyway. But you should be able to hear that chattering just a little bit. And me, I don't hear a darn thing. So for this, for me, this doesn't really work too well. So I don't bother with that type. But there are alternatives. Here's one alternative. Now this is electronic only. You don't even turn the machine on to use this one. So I'm coming closer. Kind of looking to the side to see how close I am. And moving in. And there, there it is. You see the light coming out of uh, these holes right here. So that means it just touched the piece. And a word of caution about these. So if you come in too fast, too hard, you're not paying attention, you can break it very easily. Also, the, the material you're checking has to be able to conduct electricity. It, it completes a circuit from the edge finder through the workpiece, the vise, the table, the whole machine, and right back to the top of the indicator. So um, if you're uh, using, I keep calling this an indicator. Good gosh. So this is an edge finder, people. This over here, that's an indicator. Just, just so I keep myself straight. Okay, so um, so yeah, uh, if your uh, workpiece is plastic or wood or, or some kind of a fiberboard, anything that does not conduct ele electricity, this type of an edge finder will not work whatsoever. It has to be ferrous. Okay, so well... Can be non-ferrous too, if it's aluminum or uh, something, as long as it conducts electricity. Then we have this electronic edge finder that looks completely different. It has a little ball on the end that does wobble a little bit, as you can see. And if you heard that beep, it's because I moved the ball so it touched the, uh, the vice jaw. It's not touching right now. Um, you can... Turn your machine on for this one. You don't need to. I'm not going to just because it's kind of noisy. So I'm going to move it a little bit closer. All right. I'm getting close. Going to slow down a little bit. And I know it's there somewhere. There it is. Okay. So I'll set my indicator to zero. Move it back away and check my zero just to double check myself. Yep. It's, it's good. So um, you can hear that because you don't even need the machine running, but it's, it's, um, Good and loud. Uh, you can see the lights illuminating. Um, I like this uh, edge finder. It's really nice. I think my favorite is still the uh, the half inch shank with a two hundred thousandths um, point on it. I don't know why. Maybe just that's because that's the one I've been using for the past forty five years. I don't know. But anyway, um, this one is a really nice choice as well. So. That's about it for edge finders. Now, there's one other tool I want to talk about, but it's not exactly an edge finder. Let's see what that is. So the tool that I have in my spindle now isn't an edge finder. It's actually called a center finder, and that's kind of what it does. Well, let's see how it works. So first thing you do, you don't turn your machine on for this one, pretty obviously. So. Um, I'm bringing it down. I see I have a little bit of wiggle room here, but I'm way off center. But I'm gonna, so I'm gonna bring it in a little bit closer. See that that line up on the top? That line is is moving, and there's a, a heavier line on the rod that I have mounted in the collet, and I still have some play here. Okay, so now I'm going to drop it down. There, now it's uh, now the center finder is all the way down on the rod, 
and the line is pretty close. Yeah, so the lines are, are, are the two lines in the, uh, the Y-shaped piece here and the rod coming out of the, the collet are pretty centered. So, I mean, for someone who doesn't know how to use an edge finder, I guess it works okay. It'll get you somewhat close, but I mean, there's no accuracy, no level of accuracy to this tool at all. So, um, it'll get you somewhere in the ballpark, but um, you're not going to hit a home run with this thing. So, now that you've seen the, uh, the video on how to use an edge finder, you don't even need it. But in case you were curious, that's what that's for. I'm personally not a fan. Wouldn't own one because the edge finder is so much better. So just to recap, this one is my favorite. It's a half inch body. Has a half inch edge, edge finder on one side, 200 thousandths on the other side. That's my go-to most common favorite when you need it. Again, a half inch body, but I have the pointed one on there. 200 thousandths on the other side, but I have the other one that's also 200 thousandths, but sometimes you'd need that pointed one. And this one, I don't know, I kind of like it. It's kind of neat. I like different, so um, I might use this one a little bit more. But anyway, I hope that you got something out of this. I hope that uh, you learned how to use an edge finder, and, and I hope you realize it's actually pretty easy to use it once you understand the uh, the mechanics of it and the math um, uh, to go one hundred thousandths in to find the edge of a two hundred thousandths uh, edge finder and so on. So anyway, hope this makes your machining process more accurate, more fun and enjoyable. And um, stay tuned for the next video coming up soon.